Welcome to labmins.com in our lab video series on Cisco IIS 2.2. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of our IIS video, you can visit our website under the security section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. And we're back with another one of our IIS video series. So this time it's going to be version 2.2. We have been covering ICE for many years now, starting in the version 1.1. Obviously, a lot of changes have been made since that version, especially with the GUI in the version 2.1. So I am going to approach this video series a little differently from our previous ones by taking an opportunity to refresh on some of our ICE basic functionalities like profiling, .1x, BYOD, posture, and guest access using the ICE 2.2 GUI. So if you're new to IIS, don't worry about getting left behind here as we are going to take you through the configuration from start to finish. Although I might refer to our past videos from time to time if the configuration happens to be the same for that part of the configuration. Now, for those of you who have already had worked on IIS or have been following our past video series and are particularly looking to learn about updates in this version, we will definitely cover new features throughout this series as well. Starting in this video, we will begin by discussing some basic concept of IIS that you need to know. We will then get into deployment options and sizing. And then in the practical part of this lab, we will be performing a fresh install of a Cisco IIS 2.2 VM since this lab video is about IIS VMware installation. So without further ado, let's get started with our lab. For our lab topology in this video, it's going to be fairly straightforward. We will be installing an ICE VM, and just to save us some time, I already have brought up LM ICE 1, which is running ICE version 2.2, and the IP of that server is 172.16.32.102. What are we going to be installing in this video is our ICE number 2, or LM ICE 2, right? The IP of .103. And that's going to be the server that we will use to build a two node deployment in our future video. Both of these servers are going to be sitting on a server VLAN, VLAN 32, with the subnet 172.16.32 slash 24. The third server in that VLAN is our Windows 2012 domain controller, and we will use that as our certificate authority server as well throughout this video series. And that server is also going to be acting as our RDP jump box. Right, all these servers are connected to our core switch, switch one. Before we begin on our server installation, let's have some discussion regarding ICE deployment. If you are new to ICE, there are a few things that you need to know about an ICE deployment. First, you must understand the concept of node persona. So persona defines the type of services an ICE node provides to a deployment. There are basically three mandatory node personas. The first one is called admin personas, and that basically provides you with the GUI access to perform configuration and the deployment management. So anytime you want to make configuration changes, then it will be performed on the admin persona or admin node. The second persona is called monitoring, and that takes care of log collections and report generations. All right, so any radius logs or TACX logs, that needs to be maintained is maintained on the monitoring node. And the third and last mandatory persona is called policy service. And that's basically the radius and tactics front end of an ICE deployment that interact with the network devices. You know, right? When the radius or tactics requests come from switch or routers or VPN concentrator, all of those will go to the policy service nodes. And policy service nodes also serves any client-facing web-based related function like a guest portal. Right, so when a guest needs to be redirected to a portal page for a lock-in, the page is being served from the policy service node. There are also a couple of other optional persona, or you can see it more as the services. And these are things like PXGrid, the TACX and what's new in version 2.2 is Passive Identity Connector. If you want to learn more about the different persona type, let me bring up an ICE installation guide, release 2.2, and you can read all about those right here. So you can see admin node, policy service node, monitoring node, PX grid node. 
the what I just described is at the high level. So make sure you get that concept nailed down and have a full understanding because that will become very important when you design your deployment. Next, you need to understand the different deployment models as it's available. Mainly, there are two types of deployment models that you will see. The first one is what's called a standalone deployment. A standalone deployment is a single server type of deployment and is typically used for whether it's lab testing or product evaluation. So normally you would not see a standalone single node deployment in production just because it lack scalability and redundancy. And because of that, there's a second type of the deployment model, which is called distributed. And a distributed deployments usually involve two ice server or above. And this is for the reason of scalability and redundancy. All right, so if you deal with the production deployment, the chances are you're going to be selecting the distributed deployment. Now within the distributed deployment, they can also be subcategorized into three categories, and they are small, medium, and large. And this will reflect the size of your deployment, usually depending on the number of concurrent sessions that you expect ICE to handle. And we'll be talking about sizing in a little bit, but in terms of different type of distributed deployment, we can go through that right here. For the small network deployment, the deployment is made up of two redundant ICE nodes with each nodes running the minimum of three mandatory personas. So again, going back to admin, monitoring, and policy service, all running on the same node. And you would have identical node as a secondary server for redundancy. As you can see right here, primary ICE, and then you have the secondary ICE. With a typical small deployment, you will configure your network access devices to point to the primary node with the secondary node being the backup server or for failover only. All right, so all of the radius or attack requests will go to the primary and when that node goes down, it will be switched over to secondary. So every of your router switches, wireless LAN controllers will have the same list of server listed in this order, primary first and then secondary. There's also a variant of a small deployment, which is called a split deployment. And that's when you start doing the load balancing at the network device level, where you split the load by having half of your network devices pointing to the primary ICE node as the primary or the first choice of server. And the other half pointing to the secondary as the first choice of server with the other node acting as the backup and vice versa. All right, of course, you have to be aware of your overall deployment capacity because when the failover happens, you want to make sure that the remaining node can handle your entire deployment capacity or network load. The second deployment option is called medium deployment. And the difference is we are now starting to separate the admin and monitoring persona from the policy service. All right, so you will have two dedicated ICE nodes that runs admin and monitoring persona. And then you can have up to five PSN, right? In short for policy service nodes, which is basically the radius front end. And that's what, as you can see here, interacts with the network devices. Overall size of the deployment is can range between four to seven nodes, depending on how many of the policy service nodes you want to include in your deployment. Right, as you can see here, all of your network devices will be configured to point to the policy service node only and not the admin or monitoring because the admins, again, deal with the config management and monitoring, it deals with locking. So they're not serving any radius attack X requests. So you wouldn't be configuring your network devices to point to those, just the PSN. And of course, for redundancy, you have multiple PSN listed as the radius or attack X server on these devices. 